Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be reviewing the properties of real numbers. So jumping right in, the commutative property of addition states that the order of addition does not affect the sum. So 2 plus 3 is equivalent to 3 plus 2. The commutative property of multiplication states the order of multiplication does not affect the product. So 2 times 3 equals 3 times 2. So the commutative property is all about order. Right? The order of addition, the order of multiplication does not matter. A good way to think of this, if someone commutes to work, they're moving. Okay, so if we move terms in an addition statement, if we move terms in a multiplication statement, we're not affecting the sum or the product. The associative property of addition states the way numbers are grouped does not affect the sum. So 5 plus the quantity 6 plus 7 is equivalent to the quantity 5 plus 6 plus 7. The associative property of multiplication states the way numbers are grouped does not affect the product. So 5 times the quantity of 6 times 7 is equivalent to the quantity of 5 times 6 times 7. Okay, so the associate property is all about how we group terms in addition or in multiplication. A good way to think of this, who we associate with is our group of friends. Associative grouping. And if we change the way we group, it does not affect the sum or the product. The identity property of addition states that when adding 0 to any number, it equals the number itself. So 5 plus 0 is equal to 5. The identity property of multiplication states that when multiplying any number by 1, it equals the number itself. So 5 times 1 equals 5. So the identity property is all about keeping a number as itself. Okay, so for addition, that means we're just going to add 0. For multiplication, we're going to multiply by 1. And think about it this way, right? The identity, your identity is who you are. You don't want to change that. Okay, so under addition, how do we leave that unchanged? Under multiplication, how do we leave that unchanged? The inverse property of addition states the sum of a number and its negation is equal to zero. And the inverse property of multiplication states the product of a number and its reciprocal is equal to one. So for the inverse property of addition, our example is 8 plus negative 8 is equal to 0. And for the inverse property of multiplication, our example is 8 times 1 8 is equal to 1. Okay, inverses mathematically are all about undoing. Okay, so if we have 8, how do we undo adding 8? Okay, so that would be adding negative 8. If we're multiplying by 8, how do we undo that? We multiply by 1 8. And an important thing to identify here is in the inverse property of addition, we get zero, okay, which is the identity of addition, right? If we add zero to any number, it remains unchanged. Similarly, the inverse property of multiplication, if we multiply two multiplicative inverses, we get the identity of multiplication. Okay, and this is important because now we see how the identity property and the inverse property are related to one another. The zero property of multiplication states the product of any number and zero is zero. So three times zero equals zero. The distributive property states that multiplication can be distributed over addition. So three times the quantity of four plus five is equal to three times four plus three times five. And often we illustrate this out by drawing the three distributed in to the sum. Okay, so the zero property of multiplication, right? Any number times zero is always going to be equal to zero. And the distributive property, we can distribute over addition. Okay, so it's a way to simplify an expression. Determine which of the following properties is shown in each of the examples below. So the first example, pi times 1 is equal to pi. So we took pi, we multiplied by 1, it remained pi. So that's going to be the identity property of multiplication. I'm going to abbreviate here uh, when I can. Number 2, 19 plus negative 19 is equal to 0. Okay, so we added 2 values together and we got zero. So this is going to be the inverse property 
of addition. Number three, four times nine is equal to nine times four. So the same product, the terms have just been switched. So that's going to be the commutative property. of multiplication. Number 4, 11 plus the quantity 12 plus 13 is equivalent to the quantity of 11 plus 12 plus 13. Okay, so all we're changing here is how the terms are grouped. So that's going to be the associative property of addition. Number 5, 7 times seven to the negative first is equal to one. So we're incorporating some exponent rules in this example as well. So if I wanna rewrite it, this would be seven times one seventh equaling to one. So this is going to be the inverse property of multiplication, All right? We're multiplying two values, and we get the multiplicative identity. Number six, a times the quantity x plus y is equal to ax plus ay. So we can see here they distributed the a across that sum. So this is going to be the distributive property. So notice we didn't use all of the properties in these six examples. Hey, but they are a good way to start to discern between identity, inverse, commutative, associative, distributive. So one last example. Simplify the following expression. Justify each step with a property of real numbers. Now in this case, we're gonna be really, really tedious. Okay, so every little thing we do, we're going to have to justify. So you wouldn't normally do every step that we're going to do, but we really wanna emphasize how we're using the property of real numbers even if we're not paying attention to it. So the expression is 4x plus 3y plus three times the quantity of x minus y. So that's our given. So the first thing that I see to do is to take the three and distribute it. So we have 4x plus 3y plus 3x minus 3y. And our justification there is the distributive property. So next, I see that I can switch the order of the addition of the middle two terms. So 4x plus 3x plus 3y minus 3y. So this is going to be by the commutative property of commutative property property of addition. So next, 3y minus 3y, okay, those combine to be 0, and 4x plus 3x equals 7x. 7x plus 0. So the reason that 3y minus 3y equals 0 is the inverse property of addition. And 4x plus 3x, if we had to justify that, we would just say combining like terms or simplification. And then 7x plus 0 is going to be equal to 7x, and that's by the identity property of addition. If we're adding 0 to a value, it remains unchanged. Okay, so again, would we take these steps normally? Probably not. Most of the time, if I asked you to simplify this expression, you would distribute, you would combine like terms, and then you would get to 7x a little bit more directly. But here, we're more interested in all the properties that are at work than the actual simplification. So, a lot of vocab, a lot of different properties. Hey, so review them and make sure you're confident in all of the different properties of real numbers.